What's going on guys? It's been a while, so happy to be back. This tutorial is gonna be fun. Five things that you might be doing that are absolutely ruining your grades. It's not necessarily just for beginners, but before we jump in, I wanna take a second and share some exciting news. I'm doing a live training next Monday, August 22nd, 11 a.m. Pacific time, and the webinar will cover color management fundamentals, commercial look secrets, film look secrets, and those that register and stay till the end will get the power grades for the looks that I'm going to create during the webinar. And by signing up, you will automatically be entered for a chance to win my masterclass. I will be picking three winners at the end of the webinar. This training is absolutely free. Join now, link is in the description below. Click on it, sign up. I wanna see you in the training. And on that note, let's roll the intro. All right, so now we're inside Resolve 18. So we're working with red footage, but I just wanna make this clear. It doesn't matter if it's raw, if it's shot on iPhone, if it's Rec. 79 or Log, none of those things matter as long as your technique is correct, okay? So that's just one disclaimer that I wanna make it apparent to everyone that thinks that, hey, Kazi, you're working with high-end footage, so same rules don't apply. I'm here to tell you otherwise, okay? So just focus on, the technique, just look at what I'm doing, and I promise you, doesn't matter what camera you're using, apply this and you're gonna see a crazy difference, okay? So that said, let's just jump in. I wanna show you in my project settings, um, DaVinci White um, YRGB, which means I'm just leaving the color science as is, so we have more control on a no tree level. And then I'm setting my timeline color space to DaVinci uh, White Gamut. I absolutely love how it works. So I'm gonna leave that there. Now, the color management fundamentals we're going to be covering in the live training. So if that is something that you're interested about and want to learn more about that, then you should definitely sign up. Link is in the description. So let's jump in. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a node, pull it all the way to the right. And I do my log to Rec. 79 conversion um, downstream. And just if I were to break it down really quick in one sentence, it's because I want to use new resolve tools like color warper and HDR palette. I want to take advantage of it. And you want to be in a log space to do that. You don't want to choke your footage here, convert it to Rec. 709. Yes, Resolve is 32-bit float, but the part that you need to understand is that if you choke your footage to Rec. 709 here, then you're making all the changes within that color space. So you don't want to do that. You want to work in your log to have the most amount of range and then choke it at the end, whatever the final output is if that makes any sense. And once again, if you want to learn more, it's going to be in the training. We're going to deep dive. So here, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take my color space transform and I'm going to drop it on downstream. And then in here, let's go ahead and select the proper settings. So like I mentioned, this is shot on red. I'm going to go ahead and input color space. I'm going to uh, just type R and then go down here and choose red, white gamut RGB. And then in my input gamma, I'm going to hit R again. I'm going to scroll down. And here I'm going to select red lock three G 10. Okay. So now we're halfway there. We still have to make some changes. So under output color space, we're going to select rec 709. And then in our gamma, we're going to select gamma 2.4. And as soon as we do that, now we have properly converted our image from red log film to rec 709. So this is where we're at so far. Okay. Or, or I should say red lock three G 10. That was our gamma. And this is where we're at right now. So we can obviously see in our scopes, I got a four up going on here. And this waveform is great. I set this to colorize. So I can really just see the entire color story in this one scope. And you can see how much green is our image. And we can see that cyan up top, green at the bottom. And then if we want to further investigate what's really going on, we can look at our vector scope and just look at where everything is living, okay? So obviously the balance is completely off. So now let's jump into our first point, which is balancing your shot. So most of the time, uh, what might be happening is that you're going in and you're starting on a granular level by using your lift gamma gain. And I always say focus broad and then narrow in, okay? So if you start with your lift gamma gain, let's just say, and um, you start with your gamma and you pull it down a little bit, to get that green out, okay, you're doing a good job. You take your gain and you add a little bit of warmth. I'm digging it, right? Like it's looking good. You take your lift and you pull it down, something like that. So I'm buying all of it. It's kind of cool. 
but you see like how many steps we have to take and we're still not there yet. Look at from vector scope. Um, if you check out our vector scope to like where we started and where we ended up, it's not a huge change. Now, if I were to add this as, as a version and then reset this, let me show you a pro technique. So what you want to do is go under your primaries, just use your offset and just look what happens. Now I'm going to take my offset and I'm kind of just like keeping my eyes in the vector scope right here. And I'm saying, I just want to run away from like where everything is sitting. So I'm just going to go in the opposite direction and I'm going to add a little bit of warmth. And I want to just keep uh, running away from that so much ugly cyan and like green action we had going on. So I might even overcompensate just to kind of see like where everything is sitting and then pull it back. And like now if I look at the light, like, you know, that's like a 5600 Kelvin light coming through, right? So like we're now breaking into having a ton of color separation and just look at what happened here just by using our offset and look at we barely changed anything. So now if I were to leave it here for now and go to my previous version, which, you know, somebody who might not have the most experience worked on with lift gamma again, you see that compared to what we were able to do here. Um, and once again, just look at how everything is sitting on our vector scope. It's looking really, really good. So this would be step number one. You want to shave off as many steps as possible so you can really focus on the creative process and not spend so much time doing the granular like grunt work, if you will. OK, let's move on to our second point, which is adjusting your exposure. So I'm going to go ahead, create a new node. And let's just start uh, labeling our nodes too to keep everything clean. So we can just call this ODT, Output Device Transform. We're going to call this Balance. And then this is going to be our Exposure Contrast, that kind of thing. So we'll just call it, ex you know, Exposure Contrast in this node. So another thing that, you know, somebody with less experience would do is to adjust their exposure, they will just start with Lift Gamma Gain. So the like Lift Down, Gain Up right? And then gamma up a little bit, gain up, that kind of thing, like lift down, and they'll do something like that. Now, again, just by looking at the image, it's not the worst thing, right? Like it looks okay. But the problem that we're having here is like, look at the blue channel down here, we kind of clipped it, right? Like we're choking it. And um, again, we're doing too many granular things. Whereas so, so we kind of open ourselves up for errors. So now what I would do, I will reset this. And instead, what I would do is I'll go under my HDR palette. Like, why not take advantage of like the new tools that are available to us? OK, and since we set our timeline here to a uh, DaVinci white gamut, it's going to operate within that color space. So the cool thing about it is that when we make changes, they're going to behave like an actual camera stop, especially in my offset. So let's just say if I go here, just for the um, argument's sake, I go, I want to lift this up about a quarter of a stop. So I can just go in and I can start raising my exposure to 0.25. Okay, so I just lifted my image up um, by about quarter of a stop. And now at this point, I can just go under my primaries and then here, contrast and pivot, and I can just start cranking my contrast. OK, I'm going to go too far, obviously, and then I'm going to pull it back a little bit. And because um, I mean, I'm thinking like planet Earth, right? Like I want to have like a really dramatic contrast kind of thing. I'm not going for Sicario here. OK, so I'm going to kind of push it. So I'm going to keep it somewhere around here. Look at how simple this was compared to a beginner's approach where we have to do so many things and we still weren't sure if we were nailing it. Right. So that's always the goal to to shrink the steps that you want to take and get there with better accuracy. So now let's move on to our third step. And for that, I'm going to save this version and then reset this. And what I want to show you is that another mistake that beginners will make is that they might be starting out with a creative LUT. So you go online and you see a really cool LUT and you just got to have it. You buy that LUT pack, you bring it in, but you're lacking uh, fundamentals, right? So then what happens is this. And I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt that at least you know how to convert your LUT properly. So let's just say you go in here, OK, you go under LUTs, film looks, and you want to use one of these. So you're going to go under color space transform. Like I said, I'm giving you a benefit of the doubt that you know this part. You're going to go in, uh, convert it to red, white gamut. And then from here, um, it's going to be 
this, and then you're going to do Rec 709, and then here you're going to do Cineon, and you're doing Cineon so you can bring in a film print emulation from Resolve and have it properly converted. So let's just say you drop that on, okay? And uh, so far, so good. But the problem is, look at where everything is sitting. What's going on? Now, if I were to create a new node, and like, since this LUT is Rec 709, look at the color warper, how our footage got choked. Okay, like look at how everything is already kind of just like maxing out. And uh, let me show you what I mean. So keep an eye on the color warper. And if we go back to our previous example, look at how open everything is. This is what I meant when I said I do everything downstream because see like how everything gets choked here. Whereas here we're working in log. So we have so much more range compared to what's happening here. We're choked. We're gone. Like the shadows are so dirty. The highlights are so dirty. Everything is muddy in the middle. Look at like how the red channels are clipped. And what I mean by red channel being clipped is like if I just go in my lift and I raise it up, like, look at this. What is this? Like this, like this is log footage that we're supposed to be working with. Why is it clipped like that? So properly converting your image and understanding things at that level is necessary. I will go as far as saying mandatory for you to not mess up your grades. OK, so that's why. You never want to do that. You want to balance your shots first, bring in, bring in the LUT later, okay? Creative LUTs, like keep it downstream. Now let's move on to our next point, which is using too many qualifiers, okay? That's another thing that I've seen um, people do where they will ruin their grades by going under here, qualifier, doing something like this. Um, and let's just do that, right? So like something like this, and then they'll go, Hey, let's just add a little bit of red or something like that here and uh, let's play it back. So on a small screen like that, it might look OK. And once again, we are working with red. So this is where red's capability will kick in because a 16 bit image, it's in raw. So it'll give you the best bang for the buck. But if I were to do something like that on an 8 bit image, forget about it. And another thing that I want to show you is that if I hit shift H so we can see what's happening here. And if I were to zoom in in these areas and then hit play, you see that chatter that's happening. I mean, the bigger the screen that you view this content on, um, the more artifacting are going to be visible. OK, and anybody can see it. OK, like your cousin can see it. Anyone, even if they're not in this industry, if they don't understand color grading, they're going to be like, what is really going on with this image? So that's going to be very, very embarrassing when like you have like a bad key. And like I said, what people would do is that they'll they'll create a parallel node and then pull a sky like that, right? Like they'll just click on it. It's just really funny. I'm trying to make it look bad, but because this footage is so crazy raw, when it comes to qualifiers, I'm telling you like raw footage does make a huge difference. But if I had a eight bit example, you'll see what I mean. But let's just do this like, oh Jesus. I mean, it is super, super crisp. But even if we do this and once again, we just like want to add more cyan or we want to dramatize it something, right? And if I go shift H and uh, I go on our little guy here and if I hit play, you see that chatter. It's just never good. It's never, never good. You want to avoid that. OK, so then what can we do instead? So I'm going to get rid of these. And what I suggest instead is this. So I'm just going to type in HSL curves. OK, and uh, click on this guy. Go under right here, which is your hue versus hue and just go ahead and select one of these areas. So I'm just going to click right here. And you see like how it drops three points. So it gives us a really nice, easy ease, if you will, if if you're coming from After Effects background and understand what I'm saying. And then at this point, I can just grab that point and start raising it up a little bit. OK, uh, the name of the game here is just be gentle. Don't get too crazy. So I can just like raise it up to something like that. And now if I hit play, like look at it, everything is crisp. I don't care if you put this on IMAX, it's going to look good. OK, it's going to it's going to hold. Um, so the reason why I did this and I didn't grab these is because I like to have three dimension to my image. So I like that these are red and then these are a little bit of yellow and then we got a blue going on. So I like the this color separation. So I'm going to leave it like that. So how easy was it compared to like pulling qualifiers? Once again, doing a lot of manual labor that might just kind of bite you um, down the road. And now let's move on to our final point, which is creating too, too, too many power windows. OK, uh, there's a time and place for it. But like if I were to go right here and I do this and then I'll just go ahead and feather it out properly and I'm going to show you what I'm doing instead of just using my panel. So 
I just feather it out right here. So if I go, um, you know, to zero here, I basically just went ahead and I just um, went up. If I can control this and I just did something like this, let's just do something like that. And then at this point, I can just go under my gain and pull it down, right? So if I just pull it down like that in my gain, um, it's a really nice effect. I'm not going to lie. So it does help, right? Because it was just a little too bright and now it just blends in better. And then I can do a parallel node and then create another one. And uh, let's go click on that so we can see our power window. And I can put one uh, right here maybe and then go under my gamma and pull it up a little bit and then feather it out, right? And now I got another window here. Obviously, don't worry about tracking it. We can always track it too. But right now I'm trying to prove a point. Then you can create another window and then this one, you can put it on our little dude, right? So we can do something like that and then um, give it a little bit of shape, organic shape, so it doesn't look like too um, caked on, like it's just like right dead smack in the center. And then we can just feather it out a little bit and then I'm gonna take my gamma and pull it up just to bring them out a little bit more, right? So like if I were to take these three and do um, uh, on and off, like enable and disable these, nodes i mean they are making a difference but like now there's so much work that we have to do we have to track this window we have to track this window we have to track this window we have to repeat this process shot by shot if there's four different takes from four different cameras in this environment so you see what i mean um instead i can just kill this i can create a new node and uh connect the paths right here and i can just go back in here and this is what I would recommend. So I'll do, I actually won't do this window. I'll do a more of a, a natural uh, window. So we'll just create points. So I'll do something like that. I'm basically shaping it as the light is being reflected right now in real time and create something like that, right? And I'm just gonna do that. And at this point, what I wanna do is I want to invert it. So now if I hit Shift H, you see what I'm doing. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and take my gamma and pull it down a little bit, not too much. I'm going to go too much and then kind of come up something like this. And at this point, I just want to go under my feather and I want to feather it out. So I'm going to do something like that. Okay. And, and if we see this, what we did made such a huge difference, especially if we come out of here and I can show you, like, look at how much emphasis we put, um, on our guy, on our hero, and we don't have to worry about anything else. And now the next beautiful thing is that at this point, you can just go here and say, hey, give me an outside node. And it's basically taking the key information and then inverting it. So if I hit Shift H, now we're only grabbing that part. And at this point, I can just go in here, take my gain and uh, crank it up a little bit. So I can just crank up my gain uh, just to kind of give it a little bit of like a punch, right? and pop everything out. And now if I just take these two and I do before and after, look at the impact of this compared to what was done previously. And now this is gonna latch on wherever we go, right? Like just look at how beautiful it looks, how much of um, the heavy lifting it's doing and in two simple steps. Now this is gonna be very easy to copy paste onto next shots, uh, modify the shape just a little bit, those points and uh, you're good to go. Let's check out the final look in full screen. Hopefully this was helpful. And if you have any specific content suggestions, drop them in the comment section below. Do not forget to sign up for the free training. I'm telling you guys, it's going to be amazing. Usually we get tons and tons of people there. And more importantly, I have an extended Q&A section in there. So if you have any specific questions, you will get tailor-made answers while we're live in that training, okay? So it's happening on Monday, August 22nd at 11 a.m. Pacific time. Link is in the description, click and join. And on that note, guys, if you're enjoying the content, do me a favor, subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Hit the bell icon so you can be notified when we put out brand new content. And like the video if you enjoy this type of content so we can reach more epic filmmakers like yourself. Love you all. I'll see you in the next video.